Hello and welcome to episode 16 of the Project Bag podcast. My name's Gemma and I'm coming to you as always from my home in Kent where I live with my husband and my two gorgeous cats Archie and Kit9. This is my podcast about making all the things, living a crafty life and quite a lot of nonsense. <laughs> If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. So lovely to see you again. How are you? How's it going? What are you up to? I'd love to know. Let me know below. Leave me a comment or pop over to the Ravelry group if you haven't already. Introduce yourself there and let us know what's going on in the episode 16 chatter thread. If you are a new viewer trying out the podcast for the first time, thank you so much for checking out the podcast. It's so nice of you to choose mine when to try when there are so many out there and so many brilliant podcasts out there. Hopefully you'll feel right at home here and have a really good time. So hope you've got something to drink, hope you've got something to work on while we have a little chat tonight um, or this morning whenever it is you're watching this and let's get started shall we? I'm going to start with my mug. Some of you who've been watching my Vlogmas will already know about this mug. This is a very special mug. Facebook Memories, <laughs> such a useful tool, informs me that actually it was made for me when, or painted for me in 2011, so seven years ago, which means the young lady in question who painted it for me would now be 19. Um, but nevertheless, it was painted for me by one of my students, one of my year seven students back in 2011. When I was teaching in Essex and it is something that I absolutely treasure. It comes out every single year without fail. It is my going to work in the winter from the 1st of December. This is, this is the mug I use every single year. And I've got mm, a caramel macchiato because it's Christmas and the in-laws are coming and they bought us our rather nifty Tassimo machine, I thought I should probably splash out and buy some of the decent coffee ahead of Christmas. And of course, naturally, I've got to sample it, right? That does mean it is caffeinated. But that's a good thing because obviously you're watching this at a sensible time. I'm recording this at 20 to 12 on Friday night. It's the first chance I've had to really sit down and chat with you. Um, and chat with you properly and not in a way that's rushed, you know, actually spend some quality time, which is what we like to do here, as you know. Mm. So, as always, to expedite things, everywhere you can find me is down below in the down bar. Okay, so you can find my Instagram links there, Facebook, email, blog, Ravelry group, all the information is down there below for you. Obviously, you know where I'm on YouTube because you're here. If you enjoy what you see today, do consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you would like to know when I upload new videos, which at the moment is every couple of days because of Vlogmas, but usually it's only once a week, um, then if you hit the little bell, then that will ping you whenever I upload something new. Also down below are a sort of potted set of show notes. So makers I mention, stockists of yarns I talk about, um, patterns I talk about will all be linked just down below, just down there as well. I don't keep them anywhere else on the internet, so do have a look down, down below in the description. Okay, so um, I've actually made two pages of notes today because it's one of those weird episodes where I haven't got an awful lot of creative content that I'm actually working on at the minute but I've got a lot to talk about all crafty related um, but yeah so first of all how about we finally announce the winner of the crack those whips cow I closed the thread last week as I explained to viewers of last week's podcast I had uh, sent my husband off upstairs so I could record and he'd taken the laptop, which is absolutely fine, it's a shared laptop, but it meant that I, because I'd forgotten to draw the winner before recording, I couldn't then stop and interrupt him and, and do it. I mean, he would have let me, totally, but I just didn't want to. So, without any further ado, according to the wisdom that is random.org, um, I didn't use the wheelie thing today, so I haven't got anything flashy to, to share with you. The winner is... Post number 21, and I love this name, it is Knitgit UK. <laughs> well done to Knitgit UK. You have won to store some more whips in, of course. You have won yourself a little one skein sock 
project bag. Um, they are interfaced, they are box bottom so they can stand up and I think this is my last one actually. So yeah and I happen to know from a little bit of getting to know people on the old RAV that uh, Knitgit is a dog fan. So here we are. A Scotty Dog project bag just for you. Thank you so much to everybody who took part in that cow. That was amazing. I was so impressed to see all your finished objects. I felt that I thoroughly let the side down by not finishing anything. Um, and as I said last week, actually what I've done is I've desired, I, I now have the desire to cast on lots more things, like I needed any help with that. <laughs> anyway, um, the Chatter thread is still there, it's still unlocked. Do go in and have a look, talk to each other about the patterns, what modifications you made, what yarns, you know, just chat. Just have a cuppa and a chat, why not? <laughs> the other cowl we've got going on is the Great Festive Cast On Cowl. As you can see, we are looking a little bit festive here. Uh, it is December, it is the 14th, 14th today? Yeah, 14th of December. So the Great Festive Cast On Cow is coming to a close. There are just 10 days left and there is a very special prize up for grabs. So please do head over to the Chatter thread and to the Finished Objects thread. One post per finished object, we reward you individually. <laughs> so each finished object you have is an entry, definitely worth a go. And that closes on December the 24th. I will be drawing prizes on Christmas Day and I will be doing a little video to announce who has won at some point during that random week. <laughs> um, that bit between Christmas and New Year, which no one really knows what to do with. They just You're just kind of waiting, aren't you, You're in a bit of limbo. <laughs> Maybe just, you know, uh, in, in a food coma. <laughs> or resting, recovering from all the peopling that you have to do at Christmas. I definitely need recovery time when I've had to people quite a lot. Okay, so on to finished objects. And this week's segment is called F-O-O. <laughs> Because I would have had a finished object for you. I know that long-term viewers of the podcast will be expecting me to have finished the boxy. And I would have been modelling it for you. As you can see, I'm wearing zero knitted items. Nothing, just this kind of floaty top thing that makes me feel a bit, a bit witchy. Um, now, the boxy was very nearly finished. Um, I'd cast on, or picked up for the sleeves, joined it all together. Very, very pleased with it. My boxy, I think, looks absolutely fabulous. I'm just a little bit concerned about this. It looks a little bit wee. Now, I've tried it on. I've got chunkier arms, considerably chunkier arms, than my friend for whom this is destined. And I was very much hoping to give it to her tomorrow because, as you know, it's meant to be her birthday and then I missed her birthday and then, you know, you, you know how it is. So, yeah, I mean, that's the sleeve. It's ready for the edging and to be cast off. But I'm just looking at it and thinking, that looks absolutely tiny. I mean, there's my arm and there's the sleeve. I don't know. I don't know. So I knit the smallest size because my friend is a very small person. Um, that makes it sound like a child. She's not a child. <laughs> But she is very slender. At the moment, she is 38 weeks pregnant, um, coming 38 and a half weeks pregnant. So I wanted her to have something that could go over the bump, although at this rate, the baby will be born before she gets her boxy, but then would be comfortable um, and cosy for the winter months when she is um, first at home with her newborn. Um, she's, she's not a first time mum, she has a toddler as well, who's absolutely gorgeous, but yeah. Um, so what I've decided to do is rather than finish it tonight, which I could have done, is I've decided to leave it on the needles, leave it on live stitches, so I haven't done started doing the one by one edging for this. It's, rather than doing that, I have decided to leave it on the needles so she can try it on. I'm seeing her tomorrow. And if it fits comfortably, then I will finish it, pick up for the other sleeve and finish that. We are having lunch together and then we are going to a very special event together and afterwards we will be returning to hers for a girls night in. So the knitting time will be 
in abundance and that's fantastic because these sleeves are so teeny tiny that I can have the other sleeve knit and everything wound in um, woven in ready for next week's podcast and I'll record a little segment so yeah I'm just not sure I mean have any have any of you knit the smallest size on the boxy what did you think of the sleeves do let me know won't you I mean this is worsted but it, it doesn't matter about the yarn does it because the size is going to be the same obviously the size the pattern's been adjusted for the different yarn so that is my boxy which is not an fo oh whoa i do however have an actual fo that is nothing to do with knitting crochet spinning or any sort of fiber art at all i'm just going to pop a clip in here and then i will talk about it ever so shortly here you go hey you guys didn't get to see this yesterday when my friend and I were jazzing it up. But here you are. Here's my wreath. Artificial, but I have put on cinnamon sticks and dried oranges. And pine cones. It's cheerful. Okay, so I hope you liked that. That wreath actually was given to me by my grandma and it's the one that used to hang on her door many years ago. She has since upgraded but I have lots of fun each year just personalizing it that little bit more. Um, Christmas is a really expensive time of year, a beautiful wreath on door adds to the festive feeling and making people feel welcome and historically there's lots of um, connotations with plants um, about warding off evil spirits and welcoming the positive ones and actually I'm hoping to get some sprigs of rosemary for remembrance and add those to the wreath as well um, but essentially you could just get a really basic artificial wreath and add some very very simple things to make it that little bit more special each year um, I have added as you can see or dried orange segments and I have added bundles of cinnamon sticks now these smell gorgeous even though they are at least three years old um, I don't know as I would cook with these um, I think I would probably just use them decoratively and it's, it's very glamorous here we go came in a big bag like that um, and yeah I've, I've had them for I've had them for three years this is the third Christmas I've had them for I have used up the last of the orange segments I could easily have dried my own orange segments but I've never done that before and I couldn't be certain I'd get it right so I hopped on eBay and I bought a pack of cinnamon sticks and a pack of sliced oranges and I just take some basic floristry wire very fine stuff I mean obviously green would have been better or brown or something a bit less innocuous and stabbed it through the oranges twizzled it and then wrapped it around the plastic of the wrapped it around the plastic of the wreath and there we are Bob's your uncle and we all know who your aunt is <laughs> and same with the cinnamon sticks they were a little bit more fiddly to do them in bundles and I would have liked the opportunity to finish them up with ribbons but my friend came round on Thursday ahead of my knitting and crochet Christmas social that I was hosting for my students of my classes and she helped me so again same thing a um, bit of wire around the cinnamon stick and I actually just did them into a bundle of three um, and I ended up I had wanted it to be you know like a perfect uniform bundle but it ended up being a bit more like that and actually um, we decided that that worked better we liked the quirkiness the kind of not quite rightness of it if you see what I mean anyway so these really weren't very expensive you get loads of them I've got three years worth of orange segments out of the bag of orange segments obviously you need to replace them because as they get rained on in the winter as as our weather is wont to do it is wont to rain especially if you are here in Great Britain um, they do go a little bit manky over the course of the month or so that they are up um, and my wreath is usually up from the last weekend in November when I host my charity craft in, in honour of mind um, and it gets, stays up until the 6th of January so that's quite a long time so the orange bits get pulled off and get chucked and then get replaced the next year so I've had three years 
of oranges. I'd love to know if any of you have made wreaths or have wreaths on your front door. In fact, I'd love to see pictures. I'm going to open up a thread in the Ravelry group and I want to see your festive homey touches that you have made or tweaked or personalised, anything like that at all. It could be a bar humbug <laughs> wreath. Who knows? Pom-pom wreaths, they were all the rage a while ago, weren't they? Ball wreaths as well with baubles on. I don't know why I did that for baubles. <laughs> oh dear, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not sorry at all, really. I've made myself chuckle, so that's just fine. <laughs> mm. Cup handle use, would say my auntie there. Yeah, so that, that's it for finished and not quite finished objects. So now we move on to whips and a couple of my whips have seen a little bit of love this week. Boxy technically still counts as a whip, but um, first one, promise not to giggle. Ta-da! This is the remaining front of the cardigan that I'm knitting for fluff that I'm knitting for my mum's friend. I had hoped to have it done by Christmas. I still might. Who knows? If I do nothing but knit on this from Sunday, I might still have it done ready for next week when I go and visit. So there we are. That is in King Cole Calypso yarn. Um, it is a King Cole pattern. I will put the number of the pattern down below. It is basically just a pieced cardigan, quite long, lots of positive ease, so I'm doing the smallest size because she's only a little thing, my, my mum's friend, she's lovely. And um, not that I'm saying you have to be little to be lovely. I'm just saying she's lovely. She's also very slender. Those are two separate but nonetheless accurate facts. <laughs> One does not depend on the other, at least I hope not. <laughs> anyway, here we are and I've done the ribbing just about and I'm just about to start on the stockinette or stocking stitch and as you may remember, long-term viewers of the podcast, I've been working on this since the start of the podcast. I have now got to do 98 rows in stocking stitch, place two markers and work first the 55 rows in stocking stitch without shaping. And then I'm done. So easy peasy, right? TV knitting. Why I'm wanging this around, I really couldn't tell you. My next work in progress, I am really rather excited about. Despite the fact that I have a perfectly beautiful sock pattern that is, is ready to be tech edited, it's been test knit, it's ready to have the final touches sorted to it so it can be launched. I have been unable to resist casting on one of the other socks that was in my head. And here we are. These are what I'm calling my old school socks because they are designed after or in celebration of, there we are, slight twist, the socks that you used to wear, it was cer certainly in Britain that we used to wear in primary school. They were white, they came up to about here on here on your calf and they had lots and lots of lace. Some of them had hearts in, so I'm gonna be working on a pair like that as well. But this is, this is the more simple style. Hmm. I am knitting this out of um, Stranded Dye Works Vintage Christmas, which was the 2017 Christmas colourway. This year's Christmas colourway is Naughty List. I'm not sure if at the time of recording she has any left in her shop. I'm not sure. Might be worth going to have a look. Naughty List is equally beautiful. And I am um, working, I always work on a two and a half mil needle. Now, as you know, needles don't actually matter what matters is gauge. Couldn't tell you at the moment. Haven't worked it out. I also haven't written anything to do with the pattern down. I'm just purely knitting on it and will write the pattern afterwards because that's totally the way you should design things, isn't it? Just knit, then write the pattern. And if you forget things, you forget things. Uh, as you can see, last week I was about here. I just started to do the, um, the heel flap. I have completed the gusset and I am working my way merrily down the foot. I have tiny feet, so I don't have far to go. For people who are new to sock knitting or perhaps haven't knit socks before, let me tell you a little bit about them. This is the cuff, obviously. You want to use a fairly stretchy bind on, um, so that, because you knit it with such negative ease. 
that means it's much smaller than the actual circumference of your foot or your calf um, and that, that's basically what enables it to hold up it stretches to the size of your foot I work in one by one rib I personally prefer to work in one by one twisted rib I just think it comes out a bit neater. Um, one by one rib has a tendency to ladder, particularly if you are a thrower like me. And what that means is that I take my hand from my needle and I literally throw the yarn, well, not literally throw, I figuratively throw the yarn around my needle. So twisted rib always works for me. Then obviously you have the leg. And then you have the, this is for top down obviously, but toe up it's different. You do the toe and then the foot and all the rest of it. Um, and then you have the heel. There are a number of different ways to construct heels. You could have what's known as an afterthought heel. So you knit a tube for your sock and you do the toe decreases, you kitchen and stitch the toe and then you cut into where you want the heel afterwards and um, pick up the stitches and knit your heel. Or you can do um, something called a short row heel or, or and my favourite method because it's the easiest to memorise, it fits my foot the best, is what I've got here which is a heel flap which is this bit and it just makes it that little bit more hard wearing and then you use short rows to turn the heel which gives it this curve And then you go back to knitting in the round because obviously you're only knitting on one needle at this point. Then you pick up and you start decreasing for the gusset and that's what creates this triangle. So this bit is the gusset and then when you've done all that you'll just onto the foot. Okay so that's a very quick um, whistle stop tour of sock anatomy. Um, but yeah there we are so that will be off the needles i am sure very soon and i will have a hoe for next week um as for when the pattern's coming out i'm thinking spring i've got a few patterns in my head a few things that are happening and yeah it's it's going to be the springtime probably february ish i'm not entirely sure yet so we, sh we shall see but watch this space I should probably also say it's living quite happily in one of my sock sized project bags. I have the entire ball of wool in there and my sock and a whole load of other things by the looks of it as well. Darning needles and all sorts. Obviously I'm really eager to kitchen of this toe. Highly recommend actually that in each sock project bag you have a darning needle because the kitchener stitch requires one and there's nothing worse than being out and having finished a sock and not being able to kitchener stitch that toe or Better yet, hand it to someone who doesn't mind doing the kitchener stitch and they'll do it for you. Maybe if you're really lucky and make them a cup of tea, they'll weave in your ends too. There you go. Top tips from me. My next lots of works in progress is... Works is? Works in progress? Works in progress is? Works in progress. My next lot of works in progress are to do with sewing. So, you have to excuse me for a sec. I feel really mean now because some of these aren't actually going to be available till January. <laughs> Here we are. This is the beginning of a zipped sweater sized project bag and it is blowing out the camera something chronic. If I put it there I'm going to go all white again probably. Um, oh no there we are. Lighting's really struggling to cope. I look a bit ethereal here. I am the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> Um, yeah, Harry Potter bags, they will be zipped, so they'll be double-sided, lined, um, and box interfaced and box-bottomed, and they will be slightly bigger than this size bag, which is not the bag that Knit Get UK's one. This is the bag Knit Get UK's one. This is my next size up bag. Okay, so it'll be slightly bigger than that. Um, yeah, and I'm quite excited, really. So we have Gryffindor, Slytherin. Ravenclaw and good old Hufflepuff as well. Now, not teasing you so much, these are going to be the bags that go into my last shop update at the start of next week. So either the 17th or 18th of December, that is my last shop update. I'm going to be closing the shop on the 
22nd of December. So it'll be open for that Saturday and then it's shut. So I may post some orders on the Monday, but then I will be shut until January and I'm not entirely sure when I'll be reopening. Um, it's also worth noting I am not going to be having a January sale. I am quite happy with my stock, my products, they take a long time to make and I try and charge, well, I do charge fair prices all year round. So um, there's not going to be a January sale. So if you fancy getting your hands on some of these, you might not want to hang around. Here we are. This is the snowman. These are going to be drawstring project bags. They may or may not be padded. All my other ones so far have been padded, but I think that maybe non-padded ones might be nice for a change. Partly because I think you could probably fit more in there and partly because they'll squish down better. Um, so yeah, I've, I'm yet to decide, but that's the bottom. That's what they'll look like. So that's one, there's only one of each. I really like the colors on this one. It's on a peach background. Three, the blue here is just gorgeous. And four, but don't look too closely at this side. <laughs> I've had a whoopsie here. I've got my trees upside down. So I've got to get my seam ripper, which was made for me by Nicola of Handma Unique Handmade Crafts Kent. I will link her shop down below. And yeah, those trees are unfortunately upside down. These trees are the right way up. So I'm going to unpick these ones and sew them back on. So they are almost done. They just they just need the lining attached and to have have the final sewing round and finishing them off. OK, so that's it for things that have actually been being worked on. I now have lots of things that I am in the, that are in the works coming coming down the pike, as I think uh, Kristen from Vullenby would say. Um, I'm sitting on a squeaky chair, just so you know. So I've been thinking about Christmas quick knits and I have been stash diving. I have done some Christmas shopping. I've braved the crowds. I've purchased some lovely bits and bobs and I will talk about that a little bit later. But there are some people I haven't managed to buy for yet. So I've been deep stash diving to try and find some chunky yarns that I can knit up really quickly into something special for those people that are just perhaps that little bit harder to buy for. First up, <clears throat> I have pulled from my stash this ball of Can Can by Rico Design. Um, Can Can is a very interesting type of yarn. You might not have heard of it. It is, I think it's acrylic. It's 100% acrylic and one ball knits into a complete scarf. And how you do it is you pull the yarn apart and it's this fantastic fishnet type thing. Let me see here. There you go. If I put my face there, you can see it. <laughs> yeah, this fantastic kind of fishnet. And you literally just shove your needle through the yarn, through, through the holes of the fishnet and slip a certain number of stitches onto your needles and then just start knitting it as normal, knitting through whatever hole you decide to poke your needle through. Um, it can be a bit slippy. It can get a bit twizzly, but if I find if you just hold your needles up and just let it go, the scarf will untwizzle itself, which is really handy. Um, as you know, if you hold it from the bottom of the scarf and trust that your needles won't fall out, then it will untwizzle itself and that's fine. It makes this rather fantastic ruffled scarf. In fact, I might have one to show you. Okay, so here we are. This is mine. And you can really see the ruffles. And it is super cosy. I love the colour changes. Actually, it's not too dissimilar to my own peacock, actually. There we are. Um, yeah. I don't know if you can see the stitches in there. There we are. So yep, yeah, seven stitches on the needle, just knit every row and the ruffles just come of their own accord. And I think they're rather fabulous and make a rather interesting gift. Now, here's an interesting one for you. My mum was wearing hers in the high street some years ago and a woman came up to her and it turns out it was a buy from Next and she wanted to know if mum could make them for the stores, which is just a bit crackers really. <laughs> I don't know how she thought these things were made, but that's how 
you know interesting they are and they've always had lots of compliments and actually when I've given them as gifts um, the bearers of said gift or wearers of said gift have also received lots of compliments so I've got a plain black one that I think will be really nice for my auntie who is quite chic and if that if not then there's a white one with sequins on because sequins right <laughs> I have also deep stash dived and come up with some of this beauty. This is Wendy Serenity Chunky. It is, I don't know if you can see, the lighting's not great in here tonight. It's, it's really quite dark. Um, I don't know if you can see, it's actually got a bit of a fuzzy halo to it. You can just about see here because it has some alpaca in it and that makes it super scrooshy and warm and lovely. So I've got two balls of this. So I'm thinking a cowl and I've got one ball of the grey, so possibly mittens. I've got some ideas for some quick knits in my head, but I really, really like to know if this, if these designs don't pop out of my head onto the needles properly, if they don't work. Have you guys got any recommendations for super quick knits that'd be ideal for Christmas presents at this late stage? Bear in mind that when you see this, there'll be ten days to go, <laughs> or fewer than ten days to go. Actually, depending when you see this, you might be very busy this weekend. You might not have time to sit down and have a cup of tea with me for a while. Hmm. So yeah, there's some deep stash diving going on. I also have crackers. I am making my own crackers. I am not cutting out the bits of card, okay? I haven't got time. But as viewers of Vlogmas will know, I am planning on having a slightly Harry Potter themed Christmas this year. Just some slightly gentle things going on. And I found chocolate frogs and Bertie Bott's Every Flavour Beans to go in said crackers. And I have, from the factory shop, the grand price at $1.99, some actual make your own crackers. Crackers, obviously. Now, I am thinking of covering these in brown paper and drawing some sort of marauderers map type thing on but then they're just going to be assembled as normal and they're really rather good i used some of these last year as well for my craftoon the snaps are pretty good the um the jokes mm. what does santa suffer from if he gets stuck in the chimney claustrophobia oh i can hear you all groaning now i really can i can hear you groaning one of, one of my friends showed me an advent calendar some, that a mutual friend has and it's a joke each day and oh my goodness, these are the ones that even the crackers didn't want. It's so bad. It's so bad. But yeah, so crackers are on the cards and also a cardi or a sweater for me. The weather has turned much, much colder and I am discovering that I have two sweaters that I really go to. I have a lot more sweaters I have a really nice um, jumper. I've got three versions of this jumper actually with the slip stitch, there's the chair again, slip stitch crisscross pattern across the bodice, across the bust, which is really, really pretty. It's a King Cole pattern. And I have three incarnations of that. I have it in kind of a salmon pink, a more fuchsia pink and a sparkly red, which is perfect for Christmas. The sleeves kind of come down to about here. So not quite elbow length. It's lo they're long, which I love, so they come down over my bum, so it keeps your kidneys warm. But the sleeves aren't very, aren't very long, and it's, it's just not particularly snuggly as a jumper. The one I wear all the time is the purple and peach mulled one that I wore uh, loads of podcast episodes ago, and the grey that shop bought one. And those tend to be my go-to ones. The other jumpers I have are short in the body. And I find that when I sit down, my back becomes bare. If I'm wearing jeans, the jumper rides up, jeans ride down, my back becomes bare. I just don't feel particularly snugly and comfortable in them. I think they need to be much longer in the body for me. So I thought about my stash. I thought long and hard about it. And I realised that actually I don't have anything that isn't already designated for projects, for other people or for myself, um, that I could work up into a into something for me so um this actually brings me on to stash acquisitions because i have been naughty i have broken my yarn diet um yeah <laughs> i went out today and i was obviously doing vlogmas 
and I came home and filmed my acquisitions from the Christmas markets but obviously that's a lot of talking and it has more place in the podcast so I filmed it earlier there is a costume change much better lighting probably I'm going to pop that in here and I'll see you on the other side well I am all Christmas shopping out <laughs> Whew. It was a bit emotional at the times. Um, I didn't manage the card shopping. That was just too much for me. But I am very pleased because Maidstone Town Centre has um, stores which have artisans as well as more mainstream people. And I did manage to make a couple of purchases from some of the stores that I will have shown you um, in the montage before this. But I thought I'd just show you some of my purchases. Now... You will probably already have seen by this point the stranded vlogmas and with the stranded weather report. Now, I don't know what her weather's like, but I can tell you here we had some flakes of snow. So there we are. And I have not got um, a big fluffy jumper to wear. Um, I've got maybe two jumpers. I've got this one that I'm wearing at the minute. And I've got one that my mum made me that's long sleeved as well, but it's got quite a big lace panel down one side, sort of down, down here. And that makes it a bit drafty. So I thought, do you know what? Sod this for a game of soldiers, as my granddad would say. I'm going to my local yarn store, Hop Stitch and Jumper, and I purchased six balls of this without the fluff. It didn't have the fluff on it. That's come from the Christmas tree decorations. There we are. It is actually, it's showing quite red here. It's actually much more sort of burgundy wine colour. Red never shows up correctly on, on screen. Um, I bought six balls. It's Adrophil uh, Doré. Um, quite quite reasonable. They've popped another two balls by for me if I need it. We think it works out as a worsted because the gauge is 27 rows and 18 stitches over 10 by 10 centimetres. I mean, it does have a recommended needle size of 5 mil. And as we know, it's the gauge that matters, not necessarily the needle. So, I mean, the gauge would indicate that it, it's probably a worsted and Aaron. Um, and it's got this gold Stellina sparkle in it. And apparently it doesn't knit up as stripes, it knits up as bits. Um, they had a swatch knitted up, so they, they're keen to see what I do with it. So I will be casting this on at some point. Um, from the Artisan Crafts people, there was a pyrog pyrographer or pyrographer. I can't, I can't say it, but I got... How cool is that? And it's got that lovely burnt wood smell as well. And I didn't even have to ask him about the apostrophe. He knew to put it in, so he gets points. So it's a wooden pencil case. And inside there are colouring pencils, all personalised as well. So that was that. I also made some purchases from an artisan cheese company. Um, this one looks fun. Cheshire Cheese Company El Gringo Chili Lime and Tequila Cheddar. So I purchased two rounds of that because I had an offer on there, £4.90 a round or three for £13 something. Um, no, that can't be right. Can't be £13 something. Oh no, maybe it was. Maybe it was £13 something. Um, so I bought two of those and I got one of these gin and lemon cheese so that could be fun i've got no idea where this one's going actually um but i know these two are going to my uncles who appreciate a cheese a good cheese i shall be making some chutney next week so do pop along and watch that and i have also made some purchases for my harry potter themed christmas butterscotch non-alcoholic beer quite dear but we shall see we shall see so and then I had to do, oh, I also went to a charity shop. I'm a big believer in buying from charity shops. And quite honestly, my budget wouldn't stretch to anything else this year. I've picked up this gorgeous book, The Mice of St. Mary's Christmas Adventure, illustrate, text and illustrations by Tony Streeter, and it's for his parents who are both rectors of the parish. And it's a beautifully illustrated story. So I picked that up as well. I think I might pop this onto the podcast. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Beautiful illustrated story. I picked up a Winnie the Pooh goes on an expedition to the North Pole for my godson. And I was absolutely thrilled with these. My cousin is a big reader. 
Um, and I found five books of the Spid Spiderwick Chronicles in absolute mint condition. I don't think these have been read. I think this was a gift that was given to a child and they just decided it wasn't for them. Maybe not a big reader. It happens quite a lot, actually, um, in more teen books. You find them in charity shops and they actually haven't been read. The ones for little ones tend to have been read more because parents read to them. But in my experience, you can get loads of brand new books. These are the Spiderwick Chronicles, which I think was a film as well. I'm not sure. Um, I think I think I'm right in saying Freddie Highmore was in it. I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, I got those for the princely sum of a fiver. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And um, yeah, I have just got something for my husband to sort out and there are a couple of um, aunties that I need to raid my stash and see if I can knit something quickly for them because I'm just not inspired by anything I've seen out and about. So yeah, that's that's that. So that's all the that's all the children done now apart from my two nephews. So I've got those to do and friends are done. Right, Lara's godparents are done. Um, and yeah, most of the family's done. So not bad, not bad for the 14th of December. Hooray. <laughs> All right, I am going to get back to it. I will probably re-record this little clip for the Vlogmas episode and just direct people here. I don't want to do the same thing twice and Vlogmas is a short. Um, yeah, and I will, I'm going to go and put the kettle on, hang the washing out, sew some bags, <laughs> record the podcast finish boxy the list goes on all right i'm gonna let you get back to the podcast now because i think that's that's where we're gonna be see you soon if you can't see me i didn't do it i'm innocent isn't it gorgeous so um if you want to see the actual christmas market itself and the footage and meet the people the biographer and the cheesemaker then you will need to pop over to my vlog <laughs> you might have to wait it might not be edited yet it depends what happens first <laughs> but the footage of all that sort of thing will be on vlogmas i do try and keep the content different if i can there is absolutely no obligation for you to watch the vlog if you are watching the podcast or vice versa okay there's no obligation i'm making the stuff it's up to you if you decide to watch it all right promise so i dropped into hop stitch and jumper dropped off some business cards because um they keep giving them out which is just wonderful sorted out about uh, crochet courses for in the spring which is very exciting more on that later and by the till, they're ever so clever, there was this basket of glittery gorgeousness. Now on my camera that's coming up closer to red than the kind of wine colour that actually it is. So on the phone it's coming up like that, I'm not sure how it would come up on the laptop when I do that, or on your monitors for that matter, but it is a wine colour, yeah? And it has gold Selena. Now apparently, these don't, as I think I said in that clip, these don't knit up in stripes. So it'll be very interesting to see. It's Adrafil Dore and I am planning on basically making myself up a sweater pattern for me. So my perfect sweater. It's going to be longer, it's going to have some positive ease, it's going to be squishy and have long sleeves. And yeah, I'm going to make up my perfect pattern. For, for my perfect sweater. I have six balls of this. I have two more on hold just in case I need them. It says nine balls for a 30, no, for a 42 inch bust. And I am not a 42 inch bust. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna swatch, find out what my gauge is, measure myself, work it out. It's gonna be loads of fun. I probably am still not gonna have a jumper to wear over winter, but well, I don't know, because we still get snow right into April, don't we? It was snow, definitely snow in April this year. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll have it to wear at least for a little bit of winter that seems to go right into spring here. So <clears throat> this brings me on to kind of the last thing I was thinking about. I keep seeing, on Instagram, as I'm sure you have, um, top nine photos, year in colour, and people sharing their make nine challenges of 2018. Now, I like the idea of make nine as a challenge, absolutely. It was a bandwagon that I jumped on with both feet quite happily at the beginning of the year. Um, I had a plan of what I wanted to make. But the thing is, with plans, particularly with me, is they don't often happen. 
And once I've kind of committed myself to something, I've told myself I have to do something, I lose all interest. Does that, do any of you find that? Have any of you like started to join in the cow and then just completely lost interest in what you're doing? I find it's happened to me with Kristen's box of socks and actually I'm kind of gutted to realise she's not doing it next year. So all that, all that gearing up and getting ready to knit lots of socks next year and she's not doing her box of socks cow, which is a real shame. I might do it unofficially anyway, as in not run it. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't take someone else's cow, but I mean, for me myself, just, just knit a box of socks. <laughs> um yeah so and it was the same with the make nine i had an idea of what i wanted to make i don't know if i came up with nine or not in the end but actually looking at my blog post about what i wanted to make in 2018 it was going to be the year of making all the things um i don't think i've got near a single one of them from that list the waiting for rain shawl i still really want to cast on that's still on my list i've got the yarns for it it's truly hooked yarns in patronus and expecto patronum i know i know that um there was a beautiful color work sweater on there which i really really do want to knit birds of a feather i can't remember if it was on there or not but it's definitely something again that i wanted to knit um and I've knit nothing from it. So I'm not sure if I want to do a Make Nine Challenge or not next year. I don't know if I want to join in. How do you feel about this? Who's joining in the Make Nine Challenge? Do you find it motivating or do you find it um, restrictive and a bit off-putting? Does it take the joy out of your making if you're making, even for yourself, to a deadline and, and you've set yourself? Because the thing is, I mean, oh. Sorry, some, sorry, something really interesting. <laughs> Actually, it's really interesting. I see other things that I'd like to do and I want to go and do that. So I like to change my mind. So I don't know if I want to aim to make nine things and just choose those things as I go along this year or if I want to set out nine things in advance and work on them. I mean, if I think about it, there probably are nine things. I want to do my Nelly socks from Ellie of Skein Dear Knits. I really want to do those. I want to do um, my cardigan or jumper, whatever it is I'm going to make in this. Um, I want to do the birds of a feather shawl and the winter for rain shawl. I've got a brioche cowl pattern from the Knitting Goddess with some of her yarns that I'd like to work up. So that's already five, isn't it? Oh, what else? I mean, if I've got five, there's probably going to be nine easily, isn't there? But then will I find that too restrictive? I just don't know. Oh, my dress. My dress, which I've already cast on, but still counts for the Make Nine Challenge, I've decided. That was my Worth Knits from Tipsy Knits Podcast, um, but it became my vlog, uh, not my vlogmas, my vicarious knitting podcast. What is it? Blame Dunder Knit Along. Blame Dunder Knit Along it became that um so that's seven i'm very nearly at nine really aren't i the shawl that i'm designing that's eight so yeah i don't know do i do make nine or not who would like to do a make nine along next year i'm gonna do it with me um i'd love to hear your thoughts oh so what's been going on with me um well <laughs> more hospital visits lots of walking as you know i'm doing vlogmas and actually i'm i'm finding vlogmas really fun i'm learning loads but i'm actually also finding it quite tiring um and i talked last week about pressure and not putting yourself under pressure and actually i didn't record this week it was wednesday night there was no knit night i was absolutely asleep on my feet from about lunchtime at work i got home lay down just for a minute at nine o'clock next thing i know it's half past 11 and my husband's gently nudging me awake so i can get changed in my pajamas into my pajamas so i'm not uncomfortable during the night and i slept until his alarm went off at half seven the next morning and i just i just couldn't and i thought you know what i'm not going to i'm just not going to and that's fine that's absolutely fine so yeah i'm I, but I, I did then fire out two yesterday. Um, I think maybe one was two and a half minutes and one was one and one minutes 40 seconds, something like that, which is just so fast. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm having loads and loads of fun. 
but it is really tiring um and also we're getting to that point where things are blending and uh, there are going to be more makes that aren't knitting related and different crafts coming up in the vlog so if you're interested in that sort of thing i am going to be making chutney next week as well um there's baking going on gift making all that sort of thing but there are also some really personal things going on so tomorrow for example um i'm going with lara's godmothers to a service at the church where lara is which is a christmas service but it's a Chris christmas remembrance service um which our vicar is is putting on um so that's going to be really special but obviously that's really personal and there are some bits of my life that are just personal you know so it's it's getting to that stage where things are getting a little bit more emotional for me um and i'm just not sure so i've decided that if i'm just not feeling it i just won't vlog all that to say don't put yourself under any pressure do what fills your cup this christmas <laughs> yeah, so what's going on with you what's new with you tell me do do tell me and yeah i've got nothing more to add this week really i've got to dismantle all these studio lights I've got to um, edit this podcast, I've got to edit the vlogs for Vlogmas, and yeah. So whatever you're doing in the run-up to the big day, I hope you are balancing it with what you need to fill your cup at Christmas. I hope you're having fun making things. I am looking forward to drawing the winner for the festive cast on cow which will be in a couple of weeks time with regards to podcasts there is going to be one next week and there probably will not be one <laughs> the week after because obviously we'll have literally just had christmas so i don't think i'll be podcasting again until the new year so i think from next week the 21st of december will be the last podcast until i think um the week beginning the 7th of january okay i hope that you have an absolutely wonderful week fill your cups do get in the ravelry group tell me what you're up to do join in the cast on cow have fun i'll see you next week bye Thank you.